Hello, golfers. Welcome back to JD Golf TV, your home for playing better, faster. Today's video is about one of the most important exercises you can ever do. If you need to hit the ball more solidly, if you need to hit it farther, and you need to hit it straighter, this is the drill for you. If you don't need any of that, then you can pass this along. So let's get after it. What I find after an awful long time in this business is that folks don't really know how to swing their arms very well in their swing. They get kind of bound up. They've been taught turn, turn, keep the hands out of it, which is just plain wrong. And since I've just had some surgery on my hands, some stitches there, this is a great drill for me to do because I'm only going to use my left arm. We're going to learn how to swing. Okay. Now, just so you know, if I turn my hips really fast, how far is the club moving? That club is not even, wait, wait, the club is actually going the other way. That's weird. So truly speaking, you've got to get the swing of the club out to the arms and hands. If you're looking for more speed, got to get your arms and hands involved. Yes, you need the whole happy family to really get really good at this and hit maximum speed. But what I'm seeing is people... We just don't know how to use the hands and arms in a golf swing properly. Go back, check out, your grip is killing you because I'm telling you folks, if you haven't fixed your grip, good luck with this. Well, anyway, once we make a backswing turn, this is the job of your left arm. It's swinging up and down. I think this is called flexion and extension of the shoulder. Okay, that's a big deal. Now the arm also, more toward the forearm, but I feel it up here too, is rolling over. Supinate, I can, hand, I can hold soup in my hand, and pronate. A little pronation, a little supination. Well, what I want you to do is I want you to get this going this way. Now, for right now, when we get to the follow through, I want your wrist to store to stay in this nice and flat condition. But the fact is from here to there, I can let the wrist go, like you see on TV so often, late in the swing, but folks are coming down to impact, and maybe they're using their trail hand too much, and they're throwing the club head past the hands. Now, that creates high shots if you hit the ball, fast shots, most likely, thin shots, short shots, left shots, shanks. Other than that, this is a wonderful move. Okay, actually, it's a great move for a flop shot and for a bunker shot, but it's not good for your full swing. Back to work. We're going to turn and swing. Turn, swing. Now, this arm is swinging down the side of my chest. It's not swinging out away from it. It's just swinging down the chest. And for this exercise, I'm going to add a ball. You could tee this up if you want. It's probably a great idea. But I'm indoors on a really thick, uh, there's a country club elite mat. I love this thing. We're going to go back. I might miss this ball completely, but I'm not working on that. I'm trying to just exercise, make this thing activated in my golf swing. So I turn back, swing up, swing through. Now you'll notice in this case, I did not turn forward because I want to isolate just this left arm motion. I don't care about contact. I don't care about where the ball goes. But I remember back in the day, Johnny Miller could hit his driver about 240 like this. He didn't suck at golf. So, turn, swing. Oh, I flushed that. Now, you can see here, I still haven't let go of the left wrist. And it's not that I haven't let go of it. I've chosen to swing the arm rather than throw from the wrist. You have to teach this to yourself. If you've been slicing it forever, by the way, you may want to go rolling all the way to here where you can see your fingernails of your left hand or where the logo of your glove is out toward the target. That would look more like this. Turn, swing. Now that time I turned it right over. The face is facing the target. The logo on the glove would be facing forward. What a wonderful, wonderful drill. That's part one of it, okay? We're learning how to use this. Some of our golf machines folks will call it the fourth accumulated release. It's a really big deal. I see, by the way, if you have kids who play golf, or if you're a kid watching this, 
there's an awful lot of kids that are very fast turn from the hips, quite fast turn from the torso, but they never get the speed out to the arm and out to the club head. This is going to help that. So drill number two would be this. Two hands, which I'm not going to mess with this too much, okay? But I go two hands, back, one hand. Oh, my goodness, I flush that again. Don't ask me how. It's a miracle. That's two to one. So I'm going back with both hands and swinging with the one hand. And then what I would do is keep it in two hands, but I would try to feel, sense, pay attention to the idea that my left arm is doing most of the work. Turn, swing. In no case am I going to do this with a lot of speed. I'm trying to actually pay attention to what I'm doing. As you will know, attention and intention are the secret to learning anything, even golf. I'm going to try to get my left arm swinging. I'm going to try to feel it moving. I see a lot of this in the kids where the left arm is back here at impact. It hasn't swung toward the target at all. It's way back here. Even turning doesn't help it. Okay? Enough. Well, that's because we've got to have this motion in the swing. All right, here we go. So we have turn, swing. That was all the left arm. Now, because I had both hands on it, you saw me turn. But with, with no left arm, or no right arm, there's my left arm. I would really, really, really love it if you put that into your daily practice. John Daly still does it. He starts out with just one hand. The left arm swing. It's a really big deal. Get after it, folks. 